was about eight, a, non, a priest put into the Magdalene Lawrence and was four months pregnant. And then I was taken off her the day I was born and put into um, an industrial school. And the same thing happened to your brother? And Christy was then five and a half. And I, I found my brother in 85. And what I found out was that Christy was been to Greenmount, which is an industrial school run by Christian Brothers, so-called Christian Brothers. He was then put into Upton, which is all in Cork, where I originally come from. At what age was he sent? He was five and a half. He was five and a half? And he was put in front of the courts. And that was in Kentuck. What reason was given that he was... The reason, I don't know what reason was, because my family were very rich, so I believe. Mm -hmm. And the reason was the priest didn't want the neighbours to be, you know, to be talking. And it was a crime, so they locked up my mother. So Christy then was five and a half, so they locked him up. He was in front of the courts, and he was ordered into Greenmount by the George Dare in the courts in uh, um, Kentuck, County Cork and he was sent to Greenmount Industrial School. Where from there, he went to Upton, mm -hmm. and then he was sent out to work for the farmer. Now this is what I believe, mm -hmm. and Christine, when I, then I discovered I had a brother, which I wasn't aware I had a brother, mm -hmm. because like, I thought I'd know the family. Because well, you were told he was dead. Yes, I wrote to the priest in Newmarket, where I originally come from there, in 1986, and he said, get on with your life, your younger brother is dead. Well, and don't, don't write back here. How did you find out that you had a brother? So I was talking to somebody one day and they said, don't tell me you believe the priest. Because they're all a pack of liars. I don't believe nothing out of their mouths. You know what they're like, they're paedophiles, I call them. That's why he calls them, which, 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 that's how he summed them up. He says to me, why don't you get your brother's birth set? And I hadn't got any births, I didn't know what age he was, etc. So in 89, I decided to go down to Joyce's house. Mm -hmm. And and then didn't know what year Christie was born or nothing. And all I knew he was, he was Christopher Smith. That's all I knew he was, his name. And I went into Joyce's house, the birth and death cert place. And when I went in, in five minutes, I had the birth cert to my hand, which I was going to, sal going to the Salvation Army with and hoping I'd find Christy. And, and you did? When I was walking up the road, I met a man who unfortunately passed away a couple of weeks ago, Jerry Ryan, had a birth cert to my hand. By accident, I met him. And he, uh, then I got on the air looking for Christy. And he asked, asked me about, you know, my past, etc. and I wouldn't be down that road for him. But anyway, I went down to Cork, and I was in the Maglam Laundries, and I always thought my mother would have been in the Maglam Laundries because the same man who locked my mother up, who's called O'Callaghan, who he was a cruelty man. An inspector? An inspector. William O'Callaghan was his name. And he locked my mother up, the same place where I found Christy in the mental hospital, in St Mary's and Our Lady's mental hospital. And he locked my mother up the day I was born. I believe he brought her straight to the mental hospital. His name was Willem O'Callan, the cruelty man. So then I believe that's where my mother was put. So I actually, when he also put me into the Magdalen Laundries, he also put me into Clonakilty Industrial School. I was put there as a scrubber the day I was born. Now, I was, there was two and a half years of my life I was missing, so I'd go down to Clonakilty, mm -hmm. you know, until I was two. Let, let's, um... So what happened anyway was that um, about my brother, then, um, when I went down to Cork, I went up to the Maglam Laundries, thinking my mother would be there, because your name was changed when you went in there, and there was all elderly ladies, so I always wondered, look, was, would that one of them be my mother? So one of the people that were doing the research for RT at the time, I said, I want to go up to the Maglam Laundries to look for my mother, and I was the only one beside me, a mother and a patient at a ladies' mental hospital. And O'Callaghan, I was told, brought her in. And that was the same man that brought me in to the Magdalene Laundries that locked up my mother. So when I went up to the Lee Road, I discovered Christy was there. And that's how I found my brother. And that was in 1989. And, and I wrote to every politician up in Dal Erden, if you ever heard of Dal Erden, mm -hmm. and the so-called politicians up there, the Taoiseach is known, the Prime Ministers, mm -hmm. the whole lot of them, Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, every one of them. And there's letters I've written to the, the help board mm -hmm. begging them to get Christy into a hospital. And Eugene Morgan, the psychiatrist, was so bitter that he decided to take his bitterness out on Christy because I went to the medical council to remove him from malpractice. So then Christy was put under house arrest. When, when I went down, my visits were super... Don't forget I had to go 150 miles to Cork to visit my brother. I also have a list, unfortunately, they have another documentation with you. But the documentation is there. I got a list, not to bring down any food. Christy was then, t I was not to bring any food to Christy. 
my visits were supervised. He was not allowed off the ward. Don't forget he's been told the medical council that Chris is supposed to be voluntary, which I have clarification that the guards brought him in. These are the photographs of my brother. Unfortunately, they're not in rotation. Please forgive me. There's a photograph from there of myself. He's a fine, fine, healthy looking man. Mm -hmm. Another one, a fine, healthy looking oh, man. Okay, so so that is the one when I found Christy, mm -hmm. my brother. Yeah. That's what he was like. Mm -hmm. That was in, um, that was taken in 1990. Okay. That one. That one there, the two of them. Mm -hmm. That one there was taken 2001. Mm -hmm. That one there was taken 2001. Now, this one here, 2006. Now there you can see um, he looks frail. Yeah, no terminal illness, I may add. Okay. This was taken 2006. This is when I was fighting for his life. That one was taken the age of the first to 06 again. And sorry about this. Let's get back. That one was taken in June 06. Now, as a matter of fact, I rang the hospital, which is a general hospital in Cork, mm -hmm. and I, behind the shrinks back, the psychiatrist's back, I got Christy into the hospital. I'll tell you exactly what he was doing to Christy. In the dormitory where Chris and my brother was, there was a window, and right under the window, they pushed his bed under the window. At this stage, he was in Unit 8, Floor 3, okay? So, so there was four beds along there. His bed was pushed under the, under the window, and it was February, bitter, bitter cold. His chest was bare to here. This is all of my statement, and I had witnessed to this. They were trying to kill him off. Of pneumonia was going to be the outcome in respect of what happened. It's going to be pneumonia. So they pushed the bed anyway, and I asked one day, why was this bed, every time I came down here, being, this was after the medical council, by the way, mm -hmm. when Eugene Morgan, the shrink, psychiatrist, if you like to call him, walked from the medical council, and the bed was pushed under, the mattress was there down to here, and Christy was not allowed to close that window, and the breeze was coming right down top of his chest. And he was left like that. During the winter? It was February and the breeze, you could even stand it, and, the, and he wasn't allowed to close it. And when I asked, I was told the cleaners are forgetting to put, to, to, when they clean, this is Sunday, don't forget, the cleaners are forgetting to push the, push the bed, to close the window, I push the bed back up, further up. So the window was there, the bed was here. So the, the bed was pushed under the window. So when I seen this, I realised things were getting worse for Christy. So I actually contacted the hospital, the general hospital myself, and I made an appointment myself, which was on the 19th of the 606, to get Christy in. When I got Christy in, that was five weeks after he collapsed, the Dr. Whelan could not believe how is he losing all this weight. So the, the two doctors clarified that was malnutrition. It had to be malnutrition because he did a perfect health. He had nothing wrong with him. And they said, after all the tests were done, they came up with the answer, ah, it's got to be malnutrition. So anyway, this is when I, you know, Christy was in the hospital. So then one doctor, Sullivan, took an awful liking to Christy because she knew about his background and how thin he was getting as well, how bad he was getting. So she put him on a strict diet, and that's a diet that will build him up. So he went back then to the hospital, and then I wrote a letter to um, up, in Belfast, up in Belfast to, um, what to call your man's name? Ian, Ian Paisley. Paisley. Okay, so this is this letter here. So I'm going to make the end of it very, very brief, because I know t time is, on, is not on your side. I'm um, just more or less, Mr. Mr. Paisley, I'm enclosing some new information for your attention, which is most significant of my brother Christopher Smith. Enclose a copy that Miss Sam um, Buckley. By the way, I got a letter from Eugene Morgan that left his post. He had never left his post, and he put a locum in there, which was all lies. He wanted to kill Christy off and stay outside himself. Well, as a matter of fact, you have a picture of him with his head cut. Yeah, I'll show you that in a few seconds. This is prior to all this. 
But I, I'm writing to Ian Pay to things are getting worse. But I'll get down to the very, very end. This man is living up in Belfast, and this is the path I'm reading out. I'm telling him that things are getting worse for Christie. He was standing up and he was doing this and scratched himself and his stomach and he kept saying, Please help me, I'm doing my penance, I'm dying, I'm dying. Help me, please help me, I'm doing my penance. He's getting thinner and thinner. He's scratched himself, he's tearing himself, and he doesn't know what's happening to him. Now, what I wrote to Ian Paisley here, and the part I just wanted to hear was very significant is the part where it says here, please, please, Mr. Paisley, it, this is the second of the first or seven that I met this, the shrink, and I said, Mr. Paisley, time is running out for Christy. Well, I can't say it didn't take place, because it did. I'm a witness of what happened to me. My life has been taken from me. Christy's life was taken from me, my mother, all because of the church and state. We all suffered for what crime did we commit. If we were mass murderers, we would not, my brother would not have done the time he did, and I wouldn't have done the time I did. I have no children today because I was locked up in the Maglam lounges in case of the fear I'd be locked up if I had a child even if I was married. That's how, how much it did to me. And yet, because of the church and state, who are so ignorant to the fact that people outside wedlock locked them up with the crime. Christy. My brother, there's thousands and millions of people in Ireland. I'm one of millions that thought was tortured, abused mentally and physically. And I was also raped by the same man who locked up my mother. And I have actually firmly believed that he used to go up and rape my mother in the ma up in the mental hospital. He actually told me the day my mother had died that he was there with her. O'Callaghan, and I could swear that on my mother's soul, I never saw her face. And this man used to get paid, O'Callaghan, for locking up people in Cork, the cruelty man he was called.